Welcome to a new Webflow tutorial. My name is Jonas Allert and I'm the founder of the web design school called Formbook. And in this tutorial, you will learn how to animate a futuristic AI-inspired interface using the new Webflow GCEP interactions. And we will create the illusion of a living mind with a glowing and morphing centerpiece that feels intelligent and alive. You can easily adapt this design to fit your own layout. As you can see here, I've set up the variables in Webflow so that you only need to define one main color and from that five accent colors are generated automatically. And these are then used throughout the ultra gradient system. I just felt like building a fictional layout again. And since my son is currently super interested in space, I thought it would be fun to create an experience that introduces one of the planets to him in a futuristic way. So we will see where it takes us. You find the free Webflow clonable of this project linked in the video description. And I will continue to grow the project over the next few weeks as I build out more parts of the site. So of course also the clonable will change and new tutorials will follow. So if you are into this kind of design and animations, subscribing is definitely worth it. Let's start by integrating a diff element, which we name Nova component. And this one should always fill 100% width and height of the um, parent wrapper element. That's also why we set it to position absolute. Give it a border radius in this case of our 50% and then a darker background color. And in this case, I have uh, a couple of presets here in my Nova AI collection. And I choose the, the darkest one. And if we have a look into the collection list here, you can set a main color and all the other accent colors are basically a mix of the main color in addition with another one. So if you change it to maybe a bit more greenish, then all the other ones are adapting accordingly. Then we can uh, next uh, integrate uh, another element, which we name Nova main shapes be 100% width and height. Maybe set it to flexbox and center all the child elements and also be position absolute. So it's always adapting to the uh, parent Nova component. Let's also use the 50% here in this case and maybe an overflow of clip. Then we can start creating different elements in different shapes and forms. So in this case, the center one should be maybe 50% of the parent also position absolute with a brighter background color. So this is not adapting from the variable collection because I think it's nice to have a brighter core blurry element in the, in the middle. I give it a slightly different border radius here and to see how this all will look like in blurry mode, we can also set the main shapes here to um, a be, be filter blur and then the 2.2 EM. So I use the EM here just in case we want to uh, change all the blurry uh, settings later. Then we can go to a parent element and change the font size here. And then all the elements inside which are using EM are being multiplied with this font size. And so we can change the blurry mode pretty fast if we want to do this later or with an animation. Then we can bring in our second shape element, which I want to have behind our shape one. So I bring it to this one and you see it's 90% width, but the full height. And then we can play around with the position absolute values here. In this case, I want the top right corner, but we animate or change this later in the GSAP animation. And this one is connected to our third um, accent color and also have a border radius here. We can also connect this one to our variable. And then we bring in our third shape here, which is in the bottom left corner, which is set to 50% and 40% height. You can of course also play around with the positioning here. And then uh, we have our also the darkest uh, background color in this case, which seems a bit weird now because we also have it in the in the background of the component but later when we animate or move all the shapes it makes sense that they have different colors here and now it comes the cool part of these shapes because we are creating a blending shape group we have a slightly less blur in this one than in the main shapes and we have the same border radius but a higher set index so it's laying above the main shapes. And inside here, we integrate a main accent shape. And this is also in the center and connected to our main color of the variable collection. Let's integrate another shape here to make the effect more visible. And this one is connected to our color two variable and is slightly positioned in the more negative top 
area. And then we have to use one setting to the blending shapes group to make this effect really, really nice. And in this case, we can play around with all the other settings here, but I find that the overlay is the best one. And when you now move some of the shapes here in the blending group, you get the really nice morphing and plasma-like effect, which is exactly what I want later in the animation. I created two more shapes here and connected them to our variable uh, collection colors here. This is more like the fourth uh, orange red one and then position them randomly inside of our circle. And if you don't want to have the glow here outside, you can of course also set the Nova component here to overflow clip. And then we could also set a box inner shadow here to make it a little bit more 3D or make it look like a, a ball basically just um, use a blur mode here and then a brighter color with a little bit of opacity and if you want to have later a really strong a blur effect then you can use the component and give this one a filter blur of maybe 2.2 em and this gives the whole shapes inside a really nice effect but let's deactivate this for now to better animate all the shapes inside Let's then open the GSAP interaction panel and we can create a page load animation from here. Create a custom one. I give it a name. And then we first rotate all uh, main shapes. So let's choose the main shapes wrapper. Then we go here to switch from element ID back to class. So it's uh, getting the, the, the class name of the element that's currently selected. And then we want to do this in 20 seconds with an ease in out and we can rotate this element to 180 degrees. And the important part of all of these settings now is that we repeat and play them back. So we can duplicate this, then we make an action for all blending shapes. 20 seconds, we go minus maybe 230 and play in infinite. And then we switch the target element to our Nova blending shapes. If you want to have it faster, you can of course just select both of them and bring them down to maybe 15 seconds. It's starting with an ease in, rotating a little bit faster and then ease out at the end. Then we can create another shape rotation. This time we want to rotate or change the main accent shape. So let's select this one, main accent shape. We want to do this in 3.5 seconds. Let's grab the width and height and then we can go to 120 height. Let's duplicate this one and then we can change the, the target here. Maybe we animate the shape 5 now but not with the height. So let's move it 120 percent in the x direction. Bring it to the start and then it should go or will grow a little bit higher than it usually is. And another thing you can do, which is also very interesting, is to grab the shape one, which is our center highlight, I think, which is here and then main shapes. Yeah, it was the first one here. And then we can not move it, but maybe just scale it down to 0.5. This can go a little bit slower. And if we have a look here in the center, the brighter area should go away and then come back after five seconds. Yeah, now it's getting brighter. Let's close the animation panel and turn back on our blur of the component. And as a funny last step, I think we can also add some ice to the AI bubble here. We can make this flexbox horizontally, maybe 45% width and a height of maybe 25%. And then also bring the, the ice here to the center by making this uh, margin right left to to auto and also give it a position absolute so it's on top of our blending layers here and then maybe 30 percent from the top and then we have to use the right zero and left zero to bring it back to the center and let's move it out of the nova component element so it hasn't the blurry filter and then we can integrate another div call it nova i we can make this 20 percent width Fill the full height of the parent element. And then let's give it a border radius here of 50%. We can use a bright, maybe our copy bright color. 
and also reduce the opacity a little bit. Uh, another blur maybe here of 0.4 EM. And then we can grab the wrapper element and use also the blending uh, overlay option here. So it's getting a little bit mixed with the background colors here. So we duplicate this one. And because we are using space between here on the wrapper element, it's pushing the other eye to the right. And of course, we also have to animate the eyes. So let's integrate another page load animation here for uh, the eyes blinking. And then we can grab our um, class of Nova Eye. Let's ch simply change the height of the element to 0%. And this should happen pretty fast in 0.15 seconds. And I think we can uh, start this animation here by at three seconds. And then it should also repeat itself back and forth one time. And we can integrate an offset time for a stagger effect. So it's going to the other eye as well, maybe 55 uh, milliseconds. And because we want to do this every three seconds, we can actually go back to the uh, trigger element and repeat this infinitely. The eye should blink every three seconds. And then we wait three seconds again, and it's blinking. Yeah. And if you have a look at the Nova box size element here, you can also change the width and height of the element. And this gives the whole plasma and circle element here a really nice adapting effect. Even the eyes are getting larger. And I think this looks just pretty spooky and pretty cool. And let's see what else we can do with this element in one of the upcoming um, videos of this new series here on this Formbook channel. And if you want to learn more about Webflow, you can invest in my new Webflow expert course where we build many cool and advanced layouts for clients.